What's up friends, today we are here with a first look and first ride video for the Max Find Max 6. I've never had a Max Find board on the channel before, so it'll be interesting to take a look at this and see if uh, they're just a bunch of talk or if they're actually worth something. So, let's go ahead and get into this. Alrighty, so. The Max 6 from Max Fine. Now, this board is a new-ish release. There's been some videos out on it, not a ton yet, but um, it's their latest offering in their lineup of boards. They have a number of different boards, and I'll probably put the uh, website on screen or something. They have their FF series. Um, they have an entry level, uh, which is the Max 6, is the top of their entry level. Um, they have their high performance ones, which are supposed to be the FF ones, and then they have a kit. Now, this board is uh, coming in at $650, at least right now. Um, it says save $50, uh, so it's just one of those typical things where it's always marked off as far as I can tell. Um, but $650, there's quite a bit of competition at that price point. Um, so this is going to have quite a bit to live up to. and. Um, We'll see if it does or not, but uh, initial impressions are that it might be a little bit lackluster, especially in the range part. Just because this is forefront, when you Google Max Find Max 6, the actual Google entry says 31 miles of range. And this is what I'm talking about when I say companies are getting out of hand with the overrating on range because 31 miles of range out of a 10S 2P 300 and I want to say 60 watt hour pack is not going to happen. <laughs> I promise you that. I My guess, I'm putting it out there right now, uh, 10S 2P, I'm guessing it's going to get about 14 miles. So half of the claimed range, um, we'll see for sure, but we're on the uh, Cloudwheel Galaxy Pros. Um, I did do a video on those wheels already, so check that out in the iCard. Um, they did fairly well in the efficiency test. They're like the Mad 105s, just a little bit less comfortable, a little bit less vibration absorption. And these are identical to the normal um, Galaxy 105s, except they have a different tread pattern. I don't really know that this tread pattern is going to make a huge amount of difference. Maybe if you ride on wet and compare them directly to each other, it'll make a difference. But at the end of the day, I mean, it's still urethane and it's really going to perform like urethane. So let's just go through a couple aspects of this board before we go out there and ride it. Um, there is some unique stuff about this board that I do want to point out since we're here and it's a new board. Um, we've got <clears throat> RGB lighting on here and apparently there's ways to set the modes and stuff. It doesn't want to turn on. Great. Well, let's see. Turn the remote on. Is this a smart power on board? It is, okay. So there is supposed to be RGB in here in like this strip. I don't know how you turn it on yet, so I need to look up how to do that. But, uh, it's got a Hobby Wing speed controller inside, and uh, on their product page it says Hobby Wing V6. I have no idea what exact Hobby Wing product code that is for the controller, so I'll probably ask them, and if I get the answer, I'll put it in this video. If not, it'll be in the full review. But um, we got Hobby Wing speed controller. We do have a base Hobby Wing remote um, with the standard screen that you will have seen on the Revel kit way back in the day. Um, it's got five battery bars, five remote bars, uh, four speed modes, forwards and reverse, and then a number of settings that you can access, um, presumably by holding down the power button after you turn it on. Let's see. Yeah, okay, so there you go. It is a 9043 Hobbywing ESC. And that actually put it into pairing mode, which is not what I intended, but that's okay. Repairing these remotes is super easy. You just press and hold the power button on the board until it flashes quickly and then it'll repair. You can actually go through here and change the unit system two miles per hour 
We do have a belt drive and 105 wheels and it looks like the drive ratio is 2.7. Pretty standard belt drive ratio. Seven motor pole pairs, blah, blah, blah. Cool, cool. So we do have it in miles now and it looks like there are 16.9 miles on the remote already, which to me means that they did some level of QC testing in the factory, maybe letting the board run at full speed for some X amount of time to do their break-in. Um, so that's good to see at least. Um, I don't think we're going to see the LEDs turn on here without getting into the Tuya app. Uh, or I can pull out the user manual. One thing I'll point out, I don't want to be too all over the place of this video, but one thing I want to point out, this board came packaged very strangely for an electric skateboard. This uh, package was this box wrapped in some um, air pack underneath here. And then the board was in a big air pack with two air packs on the end. I'll put some B-roll on screen now of how it's packaged. I've never seen a board package like that. Presumably it's cheaper than having custom closed cell foam, but in my opinion, there's a much higher uh, chance of it getting damaged. So that's, uh, that's that. All right. It's forbidden to use it on wet and slippery roads or in bad weather. <laughs> forbidden to modify the skateboard, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> okay. Very funny. Um, basic stuff. The remote in the... <laughs> And the user guide is actually not the right remote. That's a different one. This is what the remote looks like. And actually, you know, this remote shape is somewhat unique for Hobbywing. I actually kind of like it. It has a nice grippy spot for your thumb or for your index finger. And I feel like this will be pretty comfortable with gloves on and just in general use. Uh, so there is a manual shutdown. There's an auto shutdown. It says for five minutes. Connection pairing, gear switch charging, power on, battery indicator. Let's see, where are the lights? Where are the lights? Ambient light control, double click the remote power button to activate. There we go. Nice, so. <laughs> there are 10 different modes. And I don't know if it has an explanation of what mode is what but I'm assuming that you just keep double pressing the power button. Let's see. Ah, you press the power button once to change modes. Kind of cool. I think it'll look much cooler at nighttime rather than under these studio lights, but uh, I'll get some B-roll of it or something. Anyway, back to the specs of the board. Um, there's nothing really interesting in here. This is just a skate tool, a, um, a cord for charging the remote, which is USB-C. Very nice to see that. And uh, the user manuals, which uh, turned out to be quite useful. As for the specs of the board, uh, like I said at the beginning, it was 10 S2P of Samsung cells. There's a chance this is Samsung 50S. I didn't do the calculation. I'll try to put on screen what the exact cell is if I have that information. If it is a 10 S2P of Samsung 50S, there's a chance it could get higher range than I expect, but we'll see. 10S is not super competitive in today's market in general. So let's move on. We talked about the wheels. The deck here is quite unique and interesting. This is a composite deck made with PPS plastic. Very interesting choice. Uh, PPS is a very durable plastic, but you know, it is a plastic skateboard, so I'm curious to see how this deck feels. Uh, I did stand on it briefly, and I'm already not a huge fan of the width of the deck. It's a little bit skinny, and the edges have a pretty sharp concave on it. Um, so I'm not super enthusiastic about how it's going to feel long term riding it. Um, the grip tape is rubber, not actual grip tape. Uh, it claims to be vibration absorption or vibration and impact absorbing grip tape it doesn't really feel like it. it feels like it's just a sheet of rubber on top i think if you get your feet wet at all and get on here it's going to be slippery uh, compared to normal grip tape but we'll give it the uh, good old try and i'll let you guys know in the full review what i think of it but the deck shape is interesting not super creative but it is definitely different than some of the other decks out there 
but time will tell if I like it or not, but initial impressions are not so great. Underneath, like I said, it's a Hobbywing speed controller and um, got a power button and then a charge port on the side here. Comes with a, I believe, two amp charger. Um, yes, it is a 42 volt, two amp charger, 84 watts. Uh, and it does have a special charge connector. This is the same connector as the Meepo Envy uses and it's the same connector as the uh, one of the Ace Deck boards and the Meepo Voyager. I've seen this a couple times. I don't know what it's called. It's a three pin. Um, you can only plug it in one way. I think it's pretty decent for low powered charging. Uh, we've got belt drive system on the back here. It looks like 4240 motors, pretty small ones. They look like very similar to the ones on the um, X-Way Flex uh, Pro and the Flex 2 Pro. We've got RKP trucks here with this kind of weird plastic cover on half the truck. I will say it does give the trucks a unique look. Uh, some people will like it, some people might not, but it's definitely interesting, different. Uh, we've got barrels for bushings on the board side and then cones on the road side. I expect them to be fairly loose. Um, I'm not sure what durometer they are, but they are the only bushings included with it. Other interesting things, the Tuya app is definitely interesting. Not many boards have that kind of connection. so. In the full review, we'll go into what the app does and see how that all works out. It is technically IPX5 rated. Um, that is a pretty high rating. And uh, while it definitely says don't ride in wet conditions, you probably could get away with quite a bit more on this than you could on certain other boards. It does seem like it's a unibody um, plastic deck. And then I'm assuming in the top is where it all seals in so there's not many opportunities for water to get there, especially with the large rubber sheet that is on top of that. And I'm assuming there's a gasket underneath that as well. There is a bumper at the front. Nice to see a little bit of a bump guard. Nothing at the back though, where you lean it against uh, the ground, but it does have belt guards and then it has these little reflectors on here, which is interesting. Never seen reflectors on the fronts of a motor guard before, but I suppose they might shine if they get hit with light just right. But yeah, I think all in all, that's pretty much all of the specs of this thing. Um, the, yep, we got the PPS deck. We've got a composite U-shape. Yeah, 11 inches wide. Is it actually? I'll have to check that. It seems skinnier than that. Got the lighting, got the trucks, 900 watt motors each. And yes, it's 360 watts, watt hours of capacity. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Oh, oh, one other interesting thing. The motor pulleys are not plastic. Well, I mean, they're kind of plastic. They're made out of TPU. If you're familiar with TPU material, uh, the 3D printing material, it is a very durable and quite interesting material, frankly. So it's interesting to see them make a hard TPU pulley. So it'll be interesting to see how those hold up over time and see if they get rocks stuck in them easier since they're softer, or maybe they reject rocks a little bit easier. I don't know. Well, I'll have to take some time and uh, see how it goes. But for now, uh, make sure to follow my Instagram. I always forget to shout this out, but I do have an Instagram that I post there quite frequently, uh, especially on my story when I'm testing boards and stuff. So if you're interested, go follow me on Instagram and uh, I will keep updating you guys as I ride this board and learn more things about it. But for now, that's all we're gonna do in the studio. And now we'll go on to the first ride test.